Welcome to Castle of Paint. My name is Ian, and today we're going to be painting extremely small, moody nights. This is my second army for Legions Imperialis, and for them I'll be doing the Dark Angels. First and foremost of the Space Marine Legions. Nothing but loyal, I swear. To start this ball rolling, I want to start with a Chaos Black Spray. A good base coat for our black armored marines. The minis are glued to wooden stirring sticks with super glue, so I have something good to hold on to during painting. The problem with black is the color we want the mini to read at is the same as our darkest shadow, and for minis these tiny I need really good contrast, so this might prove harder than our bigger lads. I'm going to try to use slap chop or underpainting here to build all my highlights before I bring the armor back down to the black. In order to do this, I take Vallejo Model Color Neutral Grey and dry brush the mini heavily. I do this with a cheap makers brush I got from Amazon. Once it's done, I then take Vallejo Model Color White Grey and dry brush again from the top and from the front and try not to go too heavy with this step. You can see our black armor guys are now fully grey, but we can see the details. The next step is to use Citadel Contrast Black Templar and paint it over the whole mini. For bigger models, I suggest doing this step with an airbrush, just to get a more even coat. Now we're back to black, and I want to give it a bit of a highlight again. Many of the Dark Angels from the Horus Heresy I saw have a slightly silver tinge to them, so I take Vallejo Metal Color Aluminium and dry brush the mini. I do this lightly, as I do not want to overload everything we've done so far. I also only do this from the top and the front of the minis, as this is where the default army painting light source comes from. Now the base for the black armor is done, Let's base the real base. I only coat the whole thing with Vallejo model color neutral grey. With this done, I get out some sponges. I sponge on three layers of varying colors. The idea here is to give a bit of pop and visual interest to the base, but not be overpowering. I start with Vallejo model color olive green, green being a common color for ground stuff like grass or moss. Then I use Vallejo model color green ochre. The ochre color stands out against the grey and green, but sponging it on means it's irregular and not crazy overpowering. Finally, I take Vallejo model color medium sea grey and sponge it. This grey tempers the other colors and harmonizes the base. The final bit of the base is any metallic bits. These I paint with Vallejo metal color exhaust manifold. This is repeated on the tiny bits of ground between the feet of all the infantry, but they are far too small to use a sponge. So I get a brush with a great tip Raphael 8404 for me here, and slowly paint very small dots on. The trick here is to make the dots small enough and not go crazy. Now let's block in some of our secondary colors. This is to make those black armored guys pop from the tabletop. Everyone knows the Dark Angels have red guns, so I take red as my first accent color. I base all the bits like the gun, hatches on the tank, shoulder pads and cloth with or back red from Citadel. I just love this color. The next secondary I choose is Bone. In 40k, the Dark Angels are well known to have bone white armor for the first company. They don't have this in this time period, but you can see in this artwork that I'm shown on screen, and these paint jobs from GW, that sometimes they have a bone colored arm. This was enough inspiration for me. To get the bone train running, I take Citadel Bane Blade Brown and paint it over the shoulder pads of the infantry, the arms of the Terminators and the hatches of the tank. I use this color as it can cover over black pretty well, whereas the final color would struggle to do so. The final base tone to apply is the metallics. I take Vallejo Metal Color Exhaust Manifold and add it anywhere there is a gun barrel, blade, track, exhaust, or even just a bit of trim. This color can be a bit liquidy when doing the detail work, so I normally use a dry palette as opposed to a wet one. I also give it a good shake as they separate fast. The plus is that this color covers beautifully, so one coat is normally all you need here. Okay, these tiny dudes are starting to take shape. Let's pump those colors. For the red, I now have Vallejo Model Color Flat Red. This red is vibrant and pops next to the black. I paint this all over the red bit, but I leave the darker red in a fair few areas. We want the contrast here, so it's fine to leave more of the darker than I might on a bigger mini. For the bone, I take Citadel Screaming Skull and apply it over all the sections we painted brown before. On some parts here, it's very hard to leave the darker tones in the recesses, but with a good brush and a steady hand, I can start to achieve what I want. Okay, boom. These look good, but I want to add more depth, and so I'm going to do that with a wash. Or in this case, an oil wash. 
I make Absalom red brick and raw umber, add some white spirit to make it less viscous and apply it all over the minis and the base. Then we let this sit overnight. The wash has now dried and so the next part is to remove the wash from the top of the flat bits of the minis, leaving it in the recesses. I take a makeup sponge, dip it into a little bit of white spirit to remove the wash. I'm careful with the white spirit as often too much will remove the entire wash, more so with such shallow recesses. Now it is time to add in the highlights. For all of our secondary colours, I want to put in a quick edge highlight. This step doesn't take that long as we're painting such a small surface area, but really adds to the overall look. For the red areas, I take Citadel Wild Rider Red. It's kind of an orangey red, and I apply it to the high areas and the edges where the light would hit. For the bone, I take my midterm Citadel Screaming Skull and add in some Vallejo Model Color White Grey. I then do the same as with the red and add it to the edges. Finally, I take Vallejo Metal Color Aluminium and add it to the edges of all the metal sections. On some of the longer weapon barrels, I do this highlight in a scratchy way, as the long, flat highlight look would look a bit odd. We are so close to the end now, so let's add in those final steps and really make the mini pop. How many times have I said pop in this video? Not all these minis have an area that we can add to in this way, but for lights on the tanks and the plasma guys' guns, it's a super easy step that really makes them come alive. I take Vallejo model color white grey and paint it all over these areas, being careful not to miss and get it on the already completed bits of the models. For the plasma, I take Citadel Contrast Talazar Blue and paint it all over the white. For the tank lights, I take Citadel Cassandora Yellow and do the same. I break the small guys off the stirring sticks, super glue them to the bases, and now it's time for a small but big reveal. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing this come to life. Stay tuned for more and to delve deeper in what we do, head over to castlepaint.com.